So uh, we are very honored to uh, uh, have uh, with us uh, Maya Attic, Mrs. Maya Attic, who is Chief Executive Officer of the French Banking Federation. Uh, she uh, graduated from uh, the National School of Statistics and Economics Administration and ENA, so very famous uh, schools, and then moved on to uh, the Treasury, uh, then to negotiated numerous uh, European texts in Solvency II, capital requirements, etc., then moved on as Deputy Director of uh, uh, l'Agence France Trésor, then to the Fédération Nationale of the Crédit Agricole Group, and uh, since March 2020, uh, Mrs. Attig is now Chief Executive Officer of the French Banking Federation. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm very, I am the one who is honored to be here. Uh, I think it's the 21st time that I'm attending uh, this, uh, this meeting, this annual meeting, and uh, it's the first time I'm making the keynote speech, so I'm very happy to be here. Dear Hervé, dear Nicolas, uh, thank you very much for, uh, for your invitation. I'm, I'm really glad. Um, because we've taken away a lot of things from uh, this afternoon, and what we saw also was that the payments were at the forefront of the current uh, crisis. And the themes that uh, were developed this afternoon, both on the crisis and on what will follow on the years to come, are uh, very uh, important themes and they are at the heart of our banking experience. Uh, resilience, innovation, accelerated innovation in fact, new interactions and proximity. So these are the three points that I will uh, develop. Um, during this uh, short keynote speech uh, in order to wrap up all the discussions. Uh, first theme is resilience. Of course, uh, we know that it was an unprecedented shock uh, for the economy and for the persons. And what we saw and what we are all, I think, very proud of is that pay banks and payment infrastructures have coped. And they have coped with success, which is uh, swift switching to home working, for lots of people, lots of operators, uh, excellent capacity of IT systems, and this uh, seems now uh, probably something normal, but maybe one year ago, if someone had said <laughs> in this room, maybe we would not um, have, um, have said that or we would have uh, maybe have a doubt. So now, this is really a living proof that the digitalization of banking businesses has been underway for several years and that it is a success. Banks acted as operators of primary importance, of vital importance, and they have taken strong and concrete measures. Uh, I will take several examples, not always uh, on the payment side, but you will see that the idea of service to the people and service to companies is really at the heart of uh, those different examples. Uh, first example is uh, the, the support to businesses through uh, moratoria. Uh, or through state guaranteed loans. Moratoria were a voluntary approach. And here we have volume, uh, which is about around 2 million contracts, representing 20 billion uh, treasury relief for uh, companies, 20 billion liquidity relief for companies during this period. So this is a huge industrial process to be useful, of course, uh, to clients and to help them cope also with the situation. The second example is related to individuals, and I will connect that to what Sylvie uh, Goulard said earlier. Uh, service to everybody and also a large broad, uh, a large range, sorry, of, um, of uh, a large range of, uh, uh, of tools for everybody. One of the first uh, things that I had to do as new CEO of French Banking Federation is to see how it was possible to provide, um, uh, to provide cash to provide their social benefits in cash to around 1 million people in France every month. So this was very operational. It was a huge challenge for banks. It was about cash. So there was no digitalization, no paperless technologies. It was just helping people who cannot or don't want to use uh, digital uh, money uh, to, to do that. And this showed at the same time the need for 
uh, I would say, a very human uh, uh, behavior and a very, uh, very big care for people and also very strong logistics because you need to do that while, while there is a lockdown. So this was really a very big challenge and it shows the diversity of activities that French retail banking has to deal with. Uh, the third example I will give is the increase in the contactless card limit. Here again, something which seems completely normal and obvious, uh, but which was made in the midst of lockdown by teams who was, were working remotely and securely. And uh, I think it is a great pride for lots of us to be able to pay more than 30 euros uh, with a contactless card, but it is also very useful for all customers who prefer, and companies, who prefer contactless transactions during this health crisis. So, all this can be uh, summarized in a few words. Mobilization, agility, working together, listening to customers' needs, and dialogue with the public authorities, which was really appreciated by uh, different uh, institutions such as the Comité National des, Paym des Paiements Scripturaux and others. So we are very happy to see the quality of the work done uh, acknowledged, and it is also an encouragement to do better in the future. Uh, the second challenge for all banks is innovation, and we talked a lot about that today. Uh, innovation, of course, through instant transactions, greater mobility with having, carrying your bank in your pocket, and uh, with omni-channel and being able to deliver this uh, both digital and human uh, advice at the same time. Uh, innovation is vital in order to have the highest level of security, you know that we are in the mois de la cybersécurité, if I can speak uh, French a little. Uh, you know also that um, we, we, we do regular surveys in France and uh, seven uh, French people out of 10 say that the institution they trust most to take care of their personal data is their bank. So this is quite a high ranking, I would say, if you consider that it is not only banking data, but all personal data. So this was uh, an IFOP survey for FBF last year. So this uh, mois de la cybersécurité is a good way to remind everybody of very simple acts, but also of very sophisticated measures to be taken everywhere. So I encourage you to see all the videos that we are working on uh, on this mois de la cybersécurité on FBF um, uh, website. Um, innovation, finally, is helps us to make the best of competition. Why? Because we talked about non-banking players, we talked about fintech. Uh, and French banks are committed to equal terms from a regulatory perspective. This is vital for fair competition. Um, same activity, same prudential rules, accreditation, sanctions, control, anti-money laundering, etc., etc. This is, of course, uh, very important for the global security. But this does not mean that banks are not able to work with fintech on the contrary. Uh, and we all know uh, different examples of successful cooperation uh, with, I would say, exchange of uh, know-how, uh, uh, access to infrastructure for fintech, but also the ability for fintech to stimulate internal new digital expertise in banks and also to help them, I would say, uh, uh, encourage uh, their own employees to be more innovative and, and, and to be themselves intrapreneurs. So there are many, many examples about that. Uh, uh, I will not quote uh, the, the, different, uh, the, the different cases, but you know that it is something that is now working quite well, so it is really making the best of competition through innovation. My last theme uh, for the next minutes will be uh, interconnection and proximity because it is very important to ensure this interconnection without being completely dependent on the rest of the world. Of course, we talked a lot about that uh, uh, through all the afternoon. Uh, the COVID-19 crisis made this sovereignty theme uh, really in front of the scene, and in France, we are not ashamed of using this word, or should I say we are not ashamed anymore to use it, but maybe you noticed that in other countries in Europe or within the European institutions, um, the key word is to say that we are not naive anymore. So it's very nice to see a French word here again used uh, like that. So we don't, we don't say that uh, we want to be sovereign, but we say that we don't want to be naive anymore. And this is very important for medical terms, of course, but also on payment terms. 
And uh, last year, my uh, dear predecessor had the opportunity to talk to you about, um, I would say, the birth of um, uh, the European uh, payment um, uh, project about EPI project, and now it has been launched. And it is uh, we can hope that other banks will uh, join this project, uh, which will uh, be able, as has been said, to offer citizens and companies lots of uh, new, secure, innovative, interesting services. Um, um, and meet all the digital requirements of today. Uh, there is one point that we did not discuss a lot, which is the cloud, uh, which is important. Uh, and uh, here again, there are some initiatives which are not very, uh, I would say, well known. For example, the fact that the European Commission is trying to define contractual clauses for cloud services and in order to have a very, very good European standard for everybody. And we think that this is an operational objective that we will all welcome. So finally, uh, in a few words, all things considered, the payment space is a perfect illustration of many challenges that banks are facing, quality, security, resilience, and finally, pragmatism and ambition. Our discussions are invaluable in helping us to meet all these challenges. So thanks a lot. Thanks, Europlace, and thanks the Fran France Payment Forum. Thanks for your invitation.